Welcome back, my name's Steve and thank you for joining me today on my photography journey. During last week's video, I introduced the Nikon 70 to 200 millimeter F 2.8 VR S lens. As I said during that video, I wanted to take it out, take some pictures with it, and then actually have a look at those pictures to see whether it was worth me investing in that lens. Um, I've now returned the rental and again, nice and straightforward. Like I said about the whole receiving the lens in the first place, packing it up, giving it to the courier and getting it back um, was nice and straightforward. So there was no problems at all. I would highly recommend working with Wex Rental if you want to rent anything. And I paid a deposit beforehand. They took the fee for actually renting it out to that, transferred the rest of the money back to me all nice and quickly. So I certainly had no problem with, with anything in the entire process. So yes, happily recommend them to anyone that wants to rent anything in the UK. So one thing that I want to say about taking that camera out into the woods, I did find it quite heavy. I didn't think I would but the, the size and the weight of it, that was something that I hadn't expected to be a problem. But after a few hours of walking around with it, I mean, I had a tripod with me as well. So I was carrying that, carrying my Z5 along with the 2.8 lens. It all got quite heavy towards the end of it. I was quite glad to get back to the car afterwards and put everything down and just sit down for a few minutes and have a coffee. That being said, wasn't terrible. Um, I could have been more prepared with a bag and things like that. Uh, but just something to, to add to that. I didn't think it would be a problem because it wasn't that much heavier, but it soon added up over the course of that morning that I was out taking pictures. So what did I do when I wanted to test this lens out? I went out into the woods uh, early one morning in January, um, I went out without any distractions. So I didn't take the family, I didn't take any other people, any dogs, and I just went out, me, my camera, uh, the 2.8 70 to 200 lens, my tripod and some snacks. And that was it, I went for a wander. I didn't really want to think about what I was doing in the video. I didn't want to kind of narrate my way around. I didn't want to get distracted by trying to film B-roll or anything like that. So there isn't any of that in this video. I'm just going to look at the pictures that I took on that day and see how they look and see what happened as we went around. This was part of the forest that I don't usually go to. So there's some new bits and pieces that I've not seen before, um, different areas to take pictures that I haven't taken pictures before. I actually just really enjoyed being out and taking pictures. Um, it's the first time in quite a while that I've actually done that and I really enjoyed the process. So you may have noticed that I've cut down on my Instagram and things like that because I actually want to get back to just enjoying taking pictures for me, not for anyone else and just re, re find that love of photography and just going out taking pictures without a particular end goal in mind so without thinking I need to get these pictures for this video I can just go out take pictures and enjoy myself and that is something that I highly recommend as well. I didn't stick to any particular focal length any particular aperture what I wanted to do was just take pictures of what I felt inspired to take pictures of. So I've narrowed things down a bit um, I've got pictures at 2.8 um, and pictures at an aperture of 9. So we've got a bit of a comparison rather than the kind of in-between ones. Um, just kind of split them up like that. So we'll go over those two different categories and see what we've got. And I think the biggest takeaway from all of this was just reminding myself how much I enjoy being out and about taking pictures, whatever lens, camera, tripod, combination that I've got. So that's my biggest conclusion is that get out, take pictures. Okay, so the first thing that I want to look at is pictures taken at f2.8, because that's something that I can't do on my 24 to 200 mil lens, because it's an f4. And this picture of the swans, there's a lake in the woods and there's a swan, geese, ducks, everything like that in there. Um, and I wanted a picture of the swan. 
and it is beautifully sharp. Look at the water droplets on there. Look at the colors in its nose. Um, beautiful blurred background of the geese there. Perfectly in focus swan. Beautifully blurred background. That's exactly what you want at 2.8. So this is a lovely picture. 500th of a second, F 2.8. ISO 100 and 145 mils. So that was purely based on where this one was hand holding this one. Um, yeah, I really like that. And this one was just to try and look at something a bit different. F 2.8 again, what I was trying to do here, and I just kind of realized that it didn't turn out quite how I wanted it to. Hundredth of a second, so handheld, f2.8, ISO 100, 200 mils. What I was trying to do is have this perfectly in focus as kind of the highlight of that kind of man-made thing in between the trees. Now, I've missed the focus on this. I have, well, this looks perfectly in focus, um, but I think, I'm more in focus kind of in this area, this piece of metal here, in fact. So because it's F2.8, there's a big difference between being in focus and out of focus. And I missed the focus here, which is something that on an F4 lens, I wouldn't have had a problem with. It would all be in focus. What I do like is how blurred these trees are that were right up near me compared to the, the metal structure in the background, but a bit disappointed because I missed what I was actually focusing on, but that's a lesson to take away from an f2.8 lens. And here we go. Here is a gate that I have a picture of this at 2.8, picture of this at f9 as a bit of a comparison. So I have focused on the gate, so we are, where are we? 160th of a second, f2.8, ISO 100, 99 mils. And this is what we get. So you can see how out of focus this front area is as well compared to this. Now let's have a look at the edges, beautifully clean, crisp lines in there. You can see all the different contours, these green dots, whatever they are the natural patterns in the wood, um, all the way up to the edges. Let's go down to the corners. So because of where I'm focusing, this is going to be blurry anyway, but it's still sharp. It's still nice and clear. Sharp is probably the wrong word, I think, but it's nice and clear. You can see the same patterns in the wood and things like that. So it is a very sharp lens. It, it is really nice. And then these two pictures are to demonstrate that difference of how focusing in different areas will give you completely different results. So f2.8, 40th of a second, ISO 170 mil. This time I am focused on this tree here. So this is nicely in focus. You can see great detail in the wood and things like that. We go up to the corner. And we can still see it's blurry because of the f2.8, but it's still, you can see the details and everything. And then we compare that to this shot, which is of the same image, but focusing on this tree in the background. And that just shows how blurry this one now is and how sharp these ones are in the middle. You can see all these individual sticks. Um, so it just shows you the difference between f2.8 focusing close and focusing further away. Next up, a view down the path that I was walking down and f2.8 again. So I'm focusing in the distance here. Slightly softer look of everything around it. I quite like the fact that it draws your eye down the center of the pathway. I like this path. Um, again, I, I like paths. I like taking pictures of paths, focusing down the center of it. Everything is kind of drawing your attention down there. You've got the trees on either side, the greens and yellows at the front, going down to the whites of the silver birch as we go. And then the path, kind of the highlight down the middle there. 
So just a slightly different setup in my office today. I'm at my Mac mini. Um, you can see on the screen, I've, I've pre-selected some pictures that I was taking while I was out and about, and that's what we're going to look at today. So these are all pictures that I took at F9. So this first one was, it was a bit of a wet day. Um, I was out in the woods and there was this nice heathery, brackeny, yeah, definitely not heather as it is bracken. I really like the oranges that were in there against the wet tree bark, the greens in the background and everything like this. So as I said, F9, uh, a fifth of a second on my tripod, ISO 100, and I was zoomed all the way out at 200 millimeters with my 2.8 VRS. I say mine, I was renting it obviously, but let's have a look and see. So where did I focus? I focused here somewhere. We can see how lovely and crisp um, some of these areas are in, in the middle here. This is where I was focusing. Um, it must have been here, I guess. Um, then you've got these nice out of focus areas in the foreground, which give a bit of perspective to what's going on. So I was quite close to these ones, which is why they're out of focus in the center here. This is the area that I was focusing on. The tree is also in focus, but then the trees further into the background are less in focus. And that's what F9 does. It gives you that kind of wider area of focus compared to F2.8. And we'll look at the F2.8 shortly and do a bit of a comparison. But looking at the colors, looking at kind of the edges of the pictures. You've got the nice blurring of the background, nice shape to bokeh, bokeh, who knows. Um, nice out of focus bits. And then as we go back to here, we can see, let's just double check where we are. So this is 100% zoom. It's a nice crisp image. Um, I like that. I like the colors, which I think is more camera than anything else, as well as a bit of editing. Um, but yeah, I like that picture. So let's look at some other bits and pieces. This is not my favorite picture, but it has some really nice elements to it. So as you can see, again, 13th of a second. So on my tripod, F9, ISO 100, this time at 150 mil. But what I really liked here was having this area of the reflection in the water that was there, being able to see the whole of the um, electricity pylon. Got the other one in the distance there. Other than that, I'm not a big fan of this picture. I don't particularly like it, but I do like this reflection. So what we could do, D to go into the develop module, and then we can just crop it. Oh, let's make it a one by one and just see what we've got here. Let's make it a bit bigger. Stretch it out to the end of there. There we go. So that is now um, just the reflection, which I think actually looks quite good. What does auto do on here? Yeah, not too bad at all. Uh, I, I, if I was going to edit this a bit more, I would change some other bits and pieces, but I quite like this reflection. That's what I was looking for in this picture. And again, we're at F9 and we can see that it's nice and clear on there. Got quite a lot in focus here. And that was what I wanted to show you with the original one. So let's just go back to our original. So we have got lots of areas in focus, both here at the background and here in the foreground. So that is where the F9 does come in useful. And, and we can see that. Now, this picture I do like. This was a path that I walked down. So I, I came down this way, walked down the path, but I found that turning around and looking the, the other way, looking back up the hill, that was where it actually looked really good. So how have we got what we've got? So ISO 1000 here, it was quite dark, um, hundredth of a second. So I was hand holding this one. I know that because I don't go below a hundredth of a second when I'm hand holding something. Um, even though it's got the vibration reduction, the VR, 
I don't like to go too slow in case it becomes blurry. So let's have a look and see. So we're zoomed in again all the way into 100% and it's nice and clear. We can see what's in focus kind of in this mid ground. That's generally where I tend to focus. And then you've got the blurrier parts um, in front and behind, which I think gives it that bit of depth to it. So let's zoom in and see. So yeah, nicely in focus some of these parts kind of from, from here to around about here. Um, again, like the colors and everything like that. So nice and sharp. Not sure what I would expect to see um, if it wasn't sharp, but everything in that picture is looking good to me. So now we've got this one. This one I know I've taken as both an F9 and an F2.8, so we can compare the two. What I like here was this barbed wire fence and the sunshine was just catching this plant on the end here. And once Lightroom loads up, you can see in more detail what's going on there. So you've got these branches. Um, you can see these individual leaves and things against that background, which is slightly more blurred. Again, hundredth of a second. So I was hand holding this 70 mil. Uh, F9, ISO up to 640 to, to get it in. And even down here, you can see that this was all uh, nice and clear, nice and sharp. I liked playing with reflections on this day. It was something that I wanted to try out a bit and see what um, I could do with it and see whether it was something that I wanted to do. Focusing on the gate. There we go. So focused on the gate over here, F9. So we've got the reflection is also in focus. We've got a bit in focus in front and things. So let's have a look at some of these colors and things. Everything is looking good. There's no, nothing there that would make me think, oh, that's a terrible picture. Same on that side. Um, again, 20th of a second, F9, ISO 100, 99 millimeters. Could I have done this with my 24 to 200? Uh, 24 to 200 is this lens here, uh, which is filming me from behind today. Um, that is a lens that I really like. It's lighter, it's easier to carry. Could it have done this? Quite probably. So that will be my next thing is to go out and retake some of these pictures with the lenses that I've already got for a bit of a comparison. These are okay pictures. And this is the kind of picture that I take. I don't take professional quality pictures of landscapes. So could I have taken these pictures with a different camera lens combination? Absolutely. My 24 to 200 could easily have done all of these. Yes, the 2.8 is something that I can't quite reach with there, but do I need 2.8 when I'm taking pictures of big open landscapes? No, I don't. Is the quality of the glass better in the F 2.8 lens? Yes, absolutely. It costs twice as much. It's bigger, better in all the ways. But my photography is not good enough to merit that. So I will be sticking to my 24 to 200 mil lens because I'm not so scared that I'm going to break it. I'm not worried that it looks so much more expensive. It's not as heavy. So all of those kind of reasons add up for me for wanting to stay with that rather than upgrading to this, which yeah, fantastic lens. If I'm at the point in the future where it makes a critical difference as to whether I have this lens or that lens for the quality of my pictures, then yes, absolutely, I will buy it. But at the moment, when the main thing is getting out and taking pictures, the 24 to 200 is more, uh, more flexible. There's a bigger range of focal lengths that I can use. The majority of my pictures when I'm taking landscapes are at F9 or so. So I don't need that F2.8 and they are sharp enough for me.
So let's just do a few pros and cons. So the pros of the 70 to 200 f 2.8 VRS lens, is such a mouthful, is the 2.8 aperture. I can't get that on my 24 to 200. It lets a lot more light in, so I don't have to go down to slower shutter speeds or increase the ISO so much. But those are tools that I can use to compensate for not having that 2.8 aperture in terms of light. What I can't do is have that very shallow depth of field that an f2.8 aperture gives you. VR, vibration reduction, makes a big difference, particularly at 200 millimeters, and particularly if you're at f2.8, because you've got a very narrow depth of field, you want to be perfectly in focus. S, what does that mean? That is the top line of Nikon lenses, so you've got the best construction, you've got the best weather sealing, you've got the best optical performance, um, I mean, the, the piece of glass at the end of this looked beautiful and it always made me worried that I would break it. Um, even with the lens hood on, even what I do really like about this lens is the tripod collar as well. This is something that I didn't think would make any difference to my photography, but being able to put that tripod collar onto my uh, tripod, this is mounted on the lens rather than the camera being mounted on the lens. So it was easy to switch from portrait to landscape orientation, moving the camera, everything else stayed still. Everything was still on the tripod. I didn't have to take it off and put it back on, which does make a big difference. Is it worth a thousand pounds to upgrade from my 24 to 200? No, but it was really useful. What are the cons of this? big lens size and weight that's the biggest thing it was heavy it was big it was more it had more of an impact on me than i was expecting it to i didn't think having a big heavy lens would make a big difference uh, a kilogram isn't a huge amount of difference in weight but over the course of several hours yes i did realize that it wasn't the easiest to carry around i was glad to get back to the car as I said, the size of the glass at the end is too big for any of the filters that I've got. It also looked really expensive and always, I was always concerned that I would drop it, get it scratched or something like that. I didn't because I take good care of my kit, but that fear is always there. The range of focal length, so 70 to 200. My 24 to 200 obviously starts at 24. So that 24 to 70 millimeter range is quite big. That's a whole other lens. So my 24 to 200 is basically replacing two of these bigger, heavier lenses, which makes a huge difference to me if I'm going out, carrying my equipment and wanting to get the pictures at all of these different focal lengths. As well as kind of the size and the weight. What I found was storing it in my office was more difficult. Um, carrying it around when it was attached to my camera, when I had my tripod as well, was just a bit more inconvenient. It's not something you could really put onto a capture clip and have that big lens hanging down. Uh, too big and bulky for that, that's for sure. So in conclusion, would I recommend this lens? Yes, it's a fantastic lens. It's beautifully sharp, massive 2.8 aperture uh, through the whole zoom range. It's fantastic. Would I recommend it for me? No. My 24 to 200 does a perfectly good job. It doesn't go to f2.8, but that's okay. I don't take pictures at f2.8 that often. I think the biggest side effect of the rental experience was that it's not the equipment that I enjoy, it's the going out and taking pictures. So whatever camera you've got, whatever lens you've got, just go out and take pictures. That's the best way to enjoy it. For me, I would stick to the 24 to 200 millimeter lens that I've currently got. It's more flexible in terms of the focal length that it covers, it's lighter, it's easier to carry, it's easier to store, and I just really like it. Um, so for me, I'm gonna stick with that and save that money that I would have spent on this to go on different photography trips. I'm going to go on a cruise to Norway, like I said, and I want to get to Scotland and Wales this year to take lots of pictures. Um, so that is going to be coming up in the future. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and comments. Uh, make a note of what is your favorite lens? What lenses should I try in the future? 
So at the moment, I've got a 24 to 50, I've got a 24 to 200, I've got 35 millimeter f 1.8. Should I get something wider or should I look at something with a longer focal range and more telephoto lens, which might come in useful when I go to Norway? But yeah, comment down below about what your favorite lens is and have a great week. Uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you again next week. Bye.